Um, again, my name is Randall Stevens. Um, I'm going to spend uh, the next little bit here walking you through some of the uh, new features that were in this latest release uh, of Avail. Um, the, uh, the things we're going to cover, not only the updates, but at the end of this, uh, this will probably take, you know, 40 minutes or so, uh, 35, 40 minutes, and then we'll leave plenty of time. If you guys have questions, uh, you can use the, uh, the questions section of the GoToWebinar. We'll be monitoring that. We'll try to uh, answer any questions you have at the end of this. Um, on the, uh, and apologies, my, uh, I've been traveling the last couple of weeks, got a cold, and uh, I'm just now recovering with the, uh, with the sinus problem. But uh, hopefully this will all come across clearly. Um, on the product update side, um, we're, we, we just uh, released what we uh, 3.8.1 uh, version of Avail. Uh, I told a couple of people it was uh, it was one of these release cycles where the dev team was calling it a hardening block, which is usually just tightening things up. There was actually several important customer-facing features that made their way into this release. Uh, and so we wanted to make sure that you all are aware of those and can take advantage of them. One of the biggies uh, is that we now have native support for harvesting Revit parameters out of the Revit data. So I'm going to, and I'm going to walk you through and kind of show you where some of these things are. But basically you can now uh, automatically harvest uh, data out of your Revit families as tags. Um, we had customers that were already using Avail uh, to index URLs. Uh, so we made that a little bit easier. You can now natively drag and drop URLs into channels of Avail and index them. Uh, I'll give you a, a sample of that and show you uh, how that can be used. Um, probably the most uh, updates and changes that will affect you uh, are in the Avail browser for Revit. Um, for those of you that were participating in the beta, you got to see some of this, but uh, some beautiful, besides kind of a beautiful upgrade uh, to the look feel, some performance improvements, uh, you'll see uh, a nice visual upgrade with thumbnail, full thumbnails there. Uh, we've added support for nested families. I'll uh, give you a sample of that. Uh, there's this really cool new feature that we call Display This, uh, which I'll show you can dramatically improve the way that you're publishing your Revit libraries, especially around things like system families and drafting views. I'll show you what that uh, is allowing you to do. And then uh, the project mode, which had been in beta, uh, I'll just show you. We've actually just released that out of beta. You still have the option of whether you want to turn that on or off, uh, kind of firm-wide as one of the features, but, uh, but that's now come out of beta. Um, also, we made some improvements to uh, continual improvements to stream, which is still in beta, uh, but we've been beginning to roll that out to customers, continuing to roll that out. So I'm just going to give you a quick update on what that looks like and uh, make sure that you all are taking advantage of that. And then uh, we actually did a, a little bit of an uh, upgrade improvement to the what's going on on the analytics front. Uh, and I will show you some dashboards. If, uh, and we're actually doing, before I forget it, there's a webinar tomorrow and another on Monday specifically about analytics and setup and what you should be doing if you're not taking advantage of that. So uh, you can go back to the webinars page on the website and sign up for either tomorrow or Monday if you're interested in deeper dive into the analytics uh, than we'll do today. So uh, let me uh, minimize this and let's go into uh, talking about the uh, uh, Reddit uh, parameters as tags. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, to date, most people have been, uh, as they've harvested their, you know, or indexed in Revit content, organized it, you've either been using, uh, you know, your folder names or those types of things. Obviously, we continue to support that. But what we've added is a, is a great new feature that lets you begin to uh, pull parameters directly out of the Revit files while you're indexing them. So you can see here are things like the host. Uh, so if I click on, you know, show me everything that's wall hosted, uh, I can uh, quickly drill down to all the assets, right, that are, um, uh, that fall into those kinds of categories. So the way that you do that um, is, let me pop over here. So what I'll say is that this is the first of what will become many ways to begin to harvest data from different file types. So what we've actually done 
is and you'll find this in your program data uh, avail file, you'll actually see a new folder showing up there that's called add-ins. So we've actually written this as a plug-in architecture to avail. So now we can begin, the first one we've done is this Revit file type handler, but you'll see us start to do this with other file types like exit data for photos, uh, you know, even digging into like Microsoft products and being able to pull metadata from other file types. Uh, for the Revit files, uh, when you install it and you find this add-ins folder, you'll see that there's a little XML file. And if I open that up with just a text editor, you'll see one, a bunch of instructions about how you can code this, but it's really simple if you guys can see this on the screen. If I want to pull data out of a Revit file, a parameter, all I have to do is define that parameter as the key. So any, you know, if you've got shared parameters, if you've got firm-wide parameters that you're putting into that kind of data, uh, you can add those. We've also got some kind of, I'll call them fancy, there's things like we can translate things. So if I say uh, translations equal, I want to look for anything that ends in material out of my keys, and I want those to come into a veil as a material key. It's as simple as that to add that uh, into your file. And from that point on, all that data is going to flow in as you're indexing that kind of content uh, into the product. So a really uh, robust way now for you to automatically begin to, uh, to harvest that kind of data if Revit's your primary uh, use case. So uh, I'll, I'll just pop down here. I was uh, testing earlier this week with a bunch of casework. All of this data that you see came in automatically from harvesting it. So things like which Revit version are they? What category? These are all families. Here's an example where the materials have all come in about uh, you know uh, uh, have what the values are in those parameters and which keys are coming in. So uh, we think that that's going to be a, a we had a lot of people asking for it obviously uh, because there is so much uh, use going on on the Revit front and that uh, we think is just going to be a, a really exciting new feature that everybody gets to take advantage of and really help you in kind of automating your harvesting process of, uh, of this data. Um, so uh, the next kind of feature on the list is this idea that you can index URLs. So, uh, you know, we had talked about this internally and we actually started seeing customers that were kind of organically starting to use it in these kinds of ways. Uh, so we've actually made this a lot easier. So this is a channel in Avail uh, where all of these are just uh, URL indexes. Um, and where we started seeing it inside customers operations were a lot of times inside interiors groups where there's maybe a lot of product information that's having to be managed or research that's being done on that front. Uh, so you can see here, this is just a channel that we've set up and you can see the kind of keys and tags. So if, you know, if I know that I'm, uh, you know, I'm looking for lighting products, right? You can drill down to specific URLs and when I click on that, it's just gonna launch your web browser and take me into one of those products. So the way you get uh, now these kinds of URLs I'm just going to click over, let's just use Eaton as the example. So if I went to a different, uh, you know, automation and control part of their website, if I wanted to index this as a direct URL, all I literally have to do is drag that URL out of my browser onto that channel. It's going to take you through the same indexing process that you would normally go through. And in a minute or so, once that's indexed, that's going to now be in that channel. So. Really, you know, and uh, we get asked all the time, you can also think about this not just being external websites, but intranet sites. So if you're using things like SharePoint, you're running any kind of intranet site, uh, this is a really cool way to bring, again, not have to replace those publishing systems, but bring that data right to your users in the right context and make it easy, get those things tagged, make it easy for them to get to that information, either it's inside the firm or outside the firm to these kind of external websites. So. Um, not a, uh, I'll say not a, 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 a massive new feature, but one that probably opens up all new ways for you to think about the value that you can get out of uh, what you're doing inside of a veil. And, you know, as, as you know, you can, you can copy and put these uh, uh, inferences in other channels just like you could any other content. So it's really cool way to think if you've got training 
uh, or ma other manufacturer or other kind of information that you want to link to, you can put that right in the context of other content inside channels that you're trying to organize and manage inside of Avail. So just a really uh, slick new way to uh, think about getting to that kind of information. Um, so uh, let's jump back to uh, some of the new features that are Revit specific. So I'm going to uh, kind of come over here into a Revit channel of content. Let me get all the rest of the stuff off the screen and pop Revit up here but alongside this so I can show you uh, some of these nice new features directly inside the, uh, the Revit interface. So all of you that are used to, that are already uh, uh, using Avail, you know that there's uh, an Avail browser. Uh, if you haven't been in the beta, though, you're going to see some new look and feel. So let me just kind of drill down here to some content to show you. Um, so I'm just going to click over here in Avail and drill down to some doors. What you're going to see inside the Avail browser for Revit is a nice just visual overhaul that's kind of one, we got rid of some of the, uh, uh, the old uh, purple uh, kind of look feel that was in there and kind of aligned all the branding and just a really nice look and feel to the product, product alignment. I was actually at uh, some customer's site uh, in Australia a couple of weeks ago and we were they were complimenting uh, our interfaces and the amount of attention that we spend to design as designers. So we always feel like, right, that if you're, if you're asking designers to use software, you should be respectful of that and put good design in front of them. So one, we appreciate when customers tell us that and recognize that. And we, I like to say, we agonize over a lot of this internally. So we're always trying to improve the interfaces. And and I, I've started saying it's a form of respect. We respect what we're trying to put in front of you and asking you to use. We should agonize over this stuff and, and, and care about what we're putting in front of you. So hopefully you guys are, are seeing that and appreciating it. But, uh, uh, besides the kind of visual overhaul, you know, there is full thumbnail support, so it doesn't make as much sense for things like these type catalogs, but I'll show you in a second uh, where these kind of different thumbnails uh, are going to make more sense. Um, the If I go into, uh, uh, well, let me kind of skip over the thumbnails and show you. With things like door types, uh, obviously we're pulling those external type catalogs, which we've always done forward, but you'll notice a new tab, you know, not only uh, uh, the types, but you'll notice that we're supporting nested families. So if you've got family types that you built and you know that you've got nested content inside of there, you can see that you can get to those nested families. You know, and if I was wanting to bring, you know, just the panic bar out of one of these door types, I could drag and drop that right out of that file. So we, uh, that was one of the things that people were always asking for. We've got that now integrated into the product. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to take advantage of that. Um, let me jump to uh, over here and show you, like in things like drafting views, that uh, when you uh, bring this kind of content in now, we've got full thumbnail support and you'll notice in the interface that the users uh, can have full control over what they, you know, for those of us that are getting older, need those things to look larger, you got full control to blow those up. Uh, in inside of uh, inside of these interfaces in this particular right uh, uh, file if I drill down you'll see like here are some walls that are inside that RVT file again full thumbnail support so nice visuals uh, again you can drag and drop out of any of this kind of content to get to it uh, and start you know working right inside your files like I'm doing here with these system family walls that are coming directly out of that RVT file so uh, Nice new uh, upgrade, we think, to the visuals. Again, uh, a lot of the content in this industry, obviously, the way we work is is, is a very visual. Uh, a lot of this content is very visual. Uh, we like to think that we've taken advantage of what the human at the other end is really good at, which is when you see things uh, that, that may help you put your hands on it just as quickly as using tags and searches. So it's that healthy combination of the two things that, um, that uh, we think make a, make a great tool on the desktop. Um, while I'm on these uh, detail libraries, you'll notice, uh, and a lot of our customers have begun really taking advantage of the ability to begin to think about breaking breaking out like individual details into individual RBT files or project files while they're working. Um, there's a lot of benefit to that that you can tag it. One of the 
the, the constraints, though, of working with RVT files, as you guys already know, is that um, an RVT file as a project file, you can never really purge it of all the data that you uh, maybe are needing or wanting uh, your users to put their hands on. So one of the things that we've done is added this really cool new feature that we call uh, display this. So um, I'm just going to use this as an example uh, to show you. So here's an RBT file where our goal was in the library to let the end user put their hand on this uh, 2D detail. So just as a reminder, you can always right click and see, uh, you know, a live data view of that to be able to make sure that that's the detail you want. Just as a reminder, you can always, if I'm working on a sheet inside of Revit, I can now go and directly just drag and drop that onto a sheet as part of my workflow and process, and Avail is going to load that and let, put you in placement mode to get you in there as quickly as possible. What's always been bad or a constraint, though, about these RBT files is you can never fully purge them of all one if you've got uh, native views in there that are made with uh, you know detail items. Of course, those details still exist in that file as well. But you can see here, right? I've still got all these families that weren't purged out of that file. So what I'm going to show you is this new display this uh, feature. If I go to my 2D view that I want here, right click and say tag as display this. What I'm doing is I'm taking advantage of the of the tag system in Avail and the features that we've built into this Avail browser to basically say, I only want you to show me this information the next time I come back to this, uh, to this asset. So I'm just going to click off of that and come back to it again. And what we're going to see is that the next time this guy's loaded, you'll notice that I don't see families anymore. All that I've got focus on is that view so that you basically put that focus for the end user on that particular asset within that file. So, where that gets really interesting, let me see if I've got that uh, other files in here. Let me see if I've got that. I'll put some system families. Let's see if I've got them in this channel or another channel. So yeah, so here's an example. So here is an RBT file where I've got about 20 wall system families. And what you're going to see that all that comes up now are those 20 or so wall types that I wanted people to focus on. Even though there may be a lot of other data inside that RBT file, this is what I wanted people focused on uh, inside this library. And of course, this is all still searchable. So if I knew that there was you know, a CMU or whatever kind of wall type, I can search for that. And again, I can just drag and drop and start working with that particular wall type inside the project. So we think that that's going to be a really powerful new feature for you BIM managers to take advantage of when you think about either these what we call container files where you've got those system families, uh, wall types, drafting view libraries, you can continue to keep those in those kinds of, um, of container files, but now you can actually isolate those particular assets. What we're really getting close to is, is starting to think about how can we really treat any of these kind of asset types, could be sheets, could be 2D drafting views, any of these kind of system families. Treat them like families, the way that you want those to be individual assets or groups of assets that I want people focused on, that I want my end users using as, uh, when they're working on particular project types. Uh, so we're further kind of giving you the tools that let you further manage and control what those end users are seeing. So that display, this is a really, really cool feature. And just so that we've already had people starting to ask, how do you undo those kinds of things? Here's what's cool about it that those just become tags. So in your display this, right, if I look at the tags for that particular asset, these are just the wall types that were just tagged as that I wanted displayed in that. So I could either come and remove those if I didn't, if I wanted to turn things off, or I could remove them all and I'm going to see everything again, right, inside that file. So you've got complete uh, kind of control over being able to, to get in there and, and organize that. And you can, of course, go into your bulk editing tools for that. And if I now go to my display this, right, I can bulk uh, edit or control those inside of, uh, inside of the bulk editing tool as well. So we're really looking forward to see what you guys do with that. 
Uh, we've already had a lot of feedback that this is going to be a killer feature that people can really take advantage of. So we wanted to uh, make sure that's one of the reasons we like to do these webinars after these release so that you guys can really drill right into what new features have been uh, added and that you can uh, start to take advantage of them ASAP inside your firms. So another, uh, I'm, I'm going to move on to the uh, project mode. So another uh, big feature, if you guys haven't uh, been taking advantage of it or seen it as part of the beta process, that you know we really feel like that a lot of the challenges that we have been solving with Avail is how to clean up uh, complex interfaces with lots of data, right? So you can think about the Avail Desktop app as doing that for all the content that's sitting on your network. And for those of you that were involved in this uh, project beta uh, exercise that we've been going through, you'll know that we've begun attacking, uh, you know, this the, the, the actual project data that's inside the Revit project file. So this is what everybody's used to living inside of, which is the built-in Revit project browser. Now we've actually got a new mode that you can flip into, and that is that we're looking avail this avail interface inside of Revit now let you look at the data that's inside the project complete with thumbnail views. So now you've got a nice visual interface. Again, you've got full control over whether you're, uh, of what those thumbnail sizes look like. But now you're actually navigating inside the data that's inside your project file. So things like your sheets, your views, the families. So we've just hopefully improving what that experience is and the, abil and the ability to visually navigate, begin navigating some of this data. So again, I can go into my families if I knew that there were certain wall types that I was looking for. I can drill in there, begin to get you know nice visual thumbnails of this kind of data so that I can see what I'm working with. Again, you know, begin to use those kind of system wall types and draw with them inside my current project. Again, everything just like the, uh, the ability to browse your content outside Right, I can look for plan views. This is all searchable. A um, couple of things that if you haven't been using this, right, it's just going to navigate just like you normally would inside your project data. Some of the kind of cool things, though, if I'm looking like in my door families, um, you'll notice that uh, kind of continuing the theme of trying to bring data to your to the end user. You'll notice little things like in the top corner that we're showing you. There's a little one there, which means there's one instance of that, but or one type that's been loaded. But as I drill down into that, well, actually, this tells me that there are three uh, instances of that. And you'll notice here that we're actually pulling more data forward. Things like you guys would probably try to put into a schedule, just so you can see like where something's hosted. We're showing you here that these are hosted in uh, certain kinds of uh, wall types. And these three instances are on level two. So if I went back to my plans, pulled up level two, and went back over to these and double clicked on one, it's just going to jump me right to that part of the project just so that you can put your hands on where these things are living. So uh, we by no means think that we're done with what we plan to do inside of this project browser, but this is a really good first step, we think. One, getting you a uh, nice visual acuity onto this data. Uh, not to make any promises. I feel like I'm an Autodesk now where I have to do my disclaimer that nothing I say um, is a guarantee of future out outcomes, but you can imagine us, you know, things like, you know, we've been hearing customers tell us that, you know, we work on projects where we've got more than a thousand sheets that are, are part of the project. Well, we really think that the future of what we're doing with Avail, you'll notice here, again, little number six that shows how much data is uh, on that sheet. But you can imagine us in the future starting to add the ability to let you, just like we're letting you tag things inside of the content management system, imagine moving forward being able to start to tag your sheets, really personalizing that down to the individual user's experience where, yes, there's a thousand sheets in this project, but there's only ten that I care about. Let me tag those. Let me click and filter out you know, down to just the ten that I care about so that I can get my work done more quickly. So that's the theme that you're going to see us continuing to work on. That's really what's driving our product development. And we're really focused on how can we make you guys more efficient. We know that you're working on projects that where you're just swimming in massive amounts of information and data. Our theme on the Avail as a product is our job is to help you uh, not only manage this information, but all the way down at the individual desk 
helping people filter to be more productive, get to that information that they're trying to work on as quickly as possible. So hopefully, as we're rolling these new features out continually, you're going to see us backfilling into that, that type of a, of a theme of what we're doing on the product, making you more productive. Um, take a drink of water here, catch my breath. So um, nice new features, hopefully, that you're going to see. You know, if you haven't, you need to put your hands on that. I'm actually going to close a veil and log in. I'm going to clear and log in as a different user. I'm going to give you a little bit of a sneak. Uh, if you haven't started taking advantage of stream, I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough. Of, we, we really think that, that we are still in beta with it. We're continuing to roll that out to customers. But uh, it's a really powerful, uh, I'll say, engine to what's going on behind the scenes with Avail. And we want you to continue to get familiar with it and hopefully start implementing it. Uh, it is only available to our enterprise, uh, our enterprise level of Avail. But uh, if you are one of those customers and you're not taking advantage of it yet, you should really start looking at it, ping us. Uh, get on the schedule to make sure you're taking advantage of it. So I'm going to, I just logged into a different uh, account here, and I'm going to show you this is what I internally, we're using it internally uh, across lots of data types, but I'm going to use show you one uh, use case and use this to explain the power of it. So this is a channel that I call a precedent library channel. I used it when we started rolling uh, had a beta, uh, had stream running internally as my daily test to make sure that it was running and what the, that it was actually working the way it should work. And the way I was using it was to actually manage and automatically publish images into this precedent library channel. So this is a channel where you can see here I've got 752 different images. Uh, I'm just taking customer and interesting photog uh, architectural photography images that I'm pulling off the web. What I'm going to show you is that if I, uh, let me just drill down to a certain, uh, some customer images here. You can see that they're automatically tagged by who the architect is, what the project names are, and all this kind of data. So I'm going to go over here to Olson Kundig. Uh, if you don't know that firm, they do some just beautiful, um, re uh, you know, beautiful residential architecture uh, projects. So I've got, in this Olson Kundig, I've got this broken out into residential and commercial imagery. I'm going to click on residential, and you can see that there's 35 images in this channel. So here I can browse through that. I could tag this with other information if I wanted to. I'm going to right click and open where those images actually sit on the network. And what you'll see is that just like looks like on your own respective networks, I've just got a series of folders, right? that this is probably what it looks like on your network where you're trying to manage your photography and uh, manage, you know, this may be by uh, project name or uh, any of this kind of data. So here you can see I've just got a series of folders. When I drill into Olson Kundig, those are broken out into some sort of standard folder structure. Here I've got residential. So what I'm going to do, there's 35 images in there, and you see 35 images that are showing up in this channel of avail. So, this may not be the uh, uh, sexiest demo, but uh, those of you that understand what's going on here, I'm just going to go do a search for Olson Kundig residential projects. I've, ch I've found that I use uh, Bing more and more for image search. Uh, may have somewhat to do with Google turning off the fact that you can't drag and drop images in natively anymore, but I'm just going to find an image. Hopefully this one doesn't, I haven't already indexed this one. So here's an image of one of their projects. I'm actually just going to take that image and drag it over into this folder, which I just dropped a JPEG image into that folder. So the way Stream works is this. I'm going to click over here. You'll see a new icon. Stream lets you define rules. So Stream gets installed as a service on your network, on your Windows server. And here you can see a rule that was set up in the Stream service. So if I right-click on this precedent library rule and say edit it, it's this simple. Much like your indexing process when you were manually trying to add data into a channel, you basically set stream up to be that same rule type. So basically the difference is I'm targeting a channel that I want this data to go into. The precedent library, I give the stream a name. I say here's the folder 
or folders on my network that I want you to monitor, and I define whether I want you to monitor the subfolders, and then I get the chance to define some rules. I want you to include only these file types. If I wanted to further, I could exclude file types. I could include or exclude folder names, and you've got a whole series <coughs> of complex filter, basically rules that you can write about what data you want to drive into that channel of avail. Could be certain uh, file types, could be certain folder names across your project uh, types that you've standardized on, and basically that's all you do, and you set that up as a rule. <coughs> After you've done that, the result is, as you see here, there's now 36 images in this channel. So the act of that image hitting the network automatically published into this channel. So if I scroll through here and see uh, which one that was that I just added, right there. So if I double click on it, there's that image that I just added. It was automatically published into the content management system. So. Here's what's important about this, and here's what we think is a game changer for the industry. I always make claims. Here's why content management systems in general don't work. They're always good in theory, terrible in practice. They're good in theory because everybody knows that we need to be managing all this information better. Everybody needs to put their hands on it. The reason that all these content management systems usually fail over time is because they require somebody to go do something and put data into the system. We have from the get-go known that the success of Avail is going for us to concentrate on making what we're doing a, as much a byproduct of you doing your work every day as possible. So a general thing that we've got on the development front is we want Avail to be a partner in your process, not another piece of the process. So things like stream are critical because you can now set up a set of rules on the back end and we're automating the publishing of data now as a byproduct of you creating information and dropping it on your network. It's automatically publishing into the system so that everybody else can put their hands on it. Game changer, right? This really changes the whole dynamic of, of what it means to be able to, to get this kind of information and to make sure that it's always up to date and current. So um, again, uh, if you're an enterprise customer, which I know several of you on this call are, and you're not already working with our team to get Stream installed on your back end and, and working with the team to get this configured, you should be doing it. Start to experiment with something. Start out small. See how powerful it is. Figure out a part of your workflow that it can work with and go to town. So I will warn you, the new Revit harvesting parameters, we haven't put that plugin architecture uh, support into the stream, but that's in the works. That'll come shortly, uh, but you can imagine how powerful that's gonna be as those Revit family files in the future hit your network as part of your workflow. Stream will hit it. Stream will eventually automatically harvest all that data that needs to be, and that stuff, you know, it's really going to relieve you as BIM managers from just concentrate on helping people get their work done, let the content hit the network, let the publishing take care of itself. So really powerful feature that we uh, think that you'll want to take advantage of on that front. Um, <clears throat> last thing that I wanted to show you, uh, talk about, is that we've actually updated, uh, got some new more granular analytics data that's driving. Uh, if you're, uh, you should, if you're not, a, if you're not set up and taking advantage of the analytics, you should be. You should sit in on one of these webinars either tomorrow or Monday or one that we've got coming up in the future uh, to make sure that you're taking advantage of that. I'm going to just uh, pop up here. You know, those of you that are using it or uh, are still kicking the tires of avail, uh, just as a reminder. We drive a lot of analytics data on the back end into, uh, we chose to use Google Analytics as our data repository. What that means is you create your own Google Analytics account. We drive all that data there. What you get to take advantage of, and the reason we chose Google Analytics as the repository is it's the world's most popular data repository, which means almost every third-party product in the world that does anything with data knows how to talk to it. So if you're using Microsoft Power BI, Tableau, other business intelligence, BI, BA tools uh, like that, 
I'm showing you right here. If you haven't looked at uh, Google's Data Studio, it's free. You can, you know, it's like the, it's like everything Google. They make it really easy. It may not be as powerful as some of those tools, but you can do some really cool stuff really quickly and put your hands on it. So things like this, you know, these are uh, easy enough for me to use, right? And I, I put these little dashboards together. But you'll be able to see, you know, if you got multiple office locations or multiple users, you'll see where that data, where people are using Avail. You'll see some of the just usage stats. Uh, this is just some of our demo account data. But some really cool stuff like a BIM Manager dashboard. One of the really cool things that you can do is show me what the top searches are that are returning zero results. So if you're a BIM manager, the most important thing in your world should be what, what are people looking for out there at their desk that they're not able to put their hands on. So this is a way of prioritizing what you should be working on uh, and concentrating on. And this is, this is the kind of valuable information that you've never, you probably only anecdotally ever heard this or only the most vocal person in the firm you know, came and told you all the time what, was, what you were doing wrong or what you should be doing. Now with Avail in use at your desktop, you actually get to see the, what people are actually looking for, what they're finding and using, or more importantly, what they're looking for and can't find, which helps you to prioritize which contents either are missing or not tagged well or what you want to work on. So some really cool features on that front. If you haven't been taking advantage of like the flags and comments feature uh, in our team and enterprise accounts, you know, now this is one of the new things. You've actually got granularity into being able to see uh, in your dashboards what content's been flagged, which channels those live in. Uh, for those of you that haven't been uh, uh, been taking advantage of that, I was going to pop a veil back up and show you what that feature looks like. Uh, you can drill right back into those channels as a manager of this content and drill right back into the content in each channel that, that has been flagged and needs to be worked on. So if I went back to my, uh, uh, let's see if I've got any filter, anything filtered here, anything that needs attention, I hope I don't have any, so let's flag something. So I might be in one of these photos and somebody can flag that saying, hey, this needs attention. They can put a comment in that, you know, this needs to be tagged, whatever that information that came back from your end users. And now all of a sudden as a BIM manager, you'll see that show up in your analytics flow and you'll also then be able to click on it, see everything in that workflow, click on, open up the comments channel, respond to it, do whatever you need to do to it. And then we uh, uh, had a lot of requests for better management of this kind of data. You can now delete those comments. You can now, uh, you know, obviously you can always unflag those things and delete all these comments, get that stuff taken care of as part of that workflow. All that data is also going to flow through your analytics stream so you can build out dashboards, know what is going on kind of across the firm. Uh, and manage that. So analytics uh, giving you a lot of really powerful uh, uh, capabilities on that front. So that's uh, the bulk of the kind of new things that we just put out in this release. For those of you that have been, uh, you know, are in our, you know that we're on, we're on like six, six and eight week release cycles. So we're churning out new features and capabilities as fast as we know what you guys are asking for. We're at that point where your all's influence, uh, you know, is really helping us understand what to work on next. So continue to keep that uh, information flowing. I'm going to shut up and see if anybody's got any questions. Jim, anybody? Yeah, we've got several. Um, one question about indexing URLs. Can you do that in any channel or is it limited only to a URL channel? You can do that in any channel. Okay. Uh, adding multiple display this categories, is it as simple as right clicking and uh, how do you revert back? It's as simple as right-clicking, selecting what you want to see. So the kind of, uh, not to dig too deep into this, but for those of you that are already using the product, when you are on one of those RBT files, you'll see all the families, all the sheets, all the, all the views, all that data. While you're in that session, you can go into any of those categories and tag those as display this, because that, that, it, during that session of the browser, you're seeing all that data. So go in there and tag any and all of that that you want to be displayed. It could be families and views and sheets or just one of those or multiple of those or any combination of it. As soon as you mouse off of that and refresh that browser session, the browser is only going to show what has been tagged as that, right? So at that point, in order to revert that, 
you got to go back into a mail and muck around with the tags that are in there. So you're either going to delete all those tags, the display this tags, and basically free that up. Because all that's going on technically is the Revit content browser is using tag data from the avail content publishing system to say, hey, for this piece of content, I want you to only show this data. And that's a layer of tag data that's wrapped around your actual piece of content right there. So it's a pretty cool feature. It's a pretty cool uh, use case of how powerful it can be to use tags to do incredibly powerful things as part of the workflow. So that's the first of many ways that we think that the power of what we're doing with Avail, the way that we are using tags. So tags aren't just necessarily for a human to go and filter through data, but for publishers and not only content publishers, but software publishers in the future to take advantage of what they can do with that tagging system behind the scenes to help drive information and workflows. So first of many things to come, that's the answer. Just, and to be clear, support multi-select, right? Yes. Uh, next question. Is it possible to see subcategories for each family through a veil? Ask that again. Is it possible to see subcategories for each family through a veil? And specifically, the list of subcategories of an object style to control the visibility and graphics um, of a family within a category. So we are not displaying any further additional info about those families inside the browser yet than you see currently. So we're not pulling forward styles or any of those kind of particular things, if I'm understanding the question right. You know, those are interesting things where if you can give us that feedback loop about what would change your world, those are what we're always looking for is, you know, here's what's a pain in the ass. All right, now that we understand that better, first thing we go do is go ask a few handful more customers, hey, is this a real problem or not a real problem? And if it is, and that becomes a theme across what we're hearing, we elevate those into, all right, this could be a game, right, this is really going to be impactful. We, so We just got confirmation that, <laughs> yes, that is a pain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. So we'll follow so, up with you yeah, directly. <laughs> good, good question, yeah, good yeah. feedback. But that, and we spend, those of you that have been with us long enough to know, we spend tons of time out talking to customers and really trying to dig into this stuff. And, you know, that's why the product is, is what it is, right? It's a... It's a really powerful product, and we spend lots of time drilling into these kinds of issues with you. The problem is, is that we've got you know hundreds of customers telling us hundreds of different things. So our job is to help to filter through that, help prioritize what are the most impactful things that we can do that impact the most people, and you know we'll eventually get there. But it's all prioritization at this point. A uh, couple more questions: Can the free version share out channels for the basic channel? The free version, uh, yeah, so um, not to get it too far in the weeds, can you share with the free version? Yes. What you can't share with the free version is your metadata because that's a privacy issue. And when you're using the free version, you're not consolidated under a plan. So functionally, can you share a channel? Yes. Functionally, does it make sense to share it because you're missing all your metadata? Yeah, so we're actually trying to prepare that, I'll say, on the free version so that there is a little better experience on that. Um, but that's the reason why, uh, because when you're sharing it with somebody for free, we don't know that you actually know the other person and should they even be seeing your information or data. So that metadata is not being shared right now, only when you're actually in a real paid plan. And, uh, but we're trying to fix that to make that a better demo experience for the free version. And um, anyway, we're marching through that. That's a, it's a complicated, it's a more complicated privacy issue. Final question. This sounds like a question about a previous potential bug. If I drag the scroll bar to the bottom, does it actually go to the bottom of the channel now? If I drag the scroll bar, oh yes, we uh, really cool improvements. I didn't even show you that, but. It's a great improvement on the rendering uh, process. You can see this, well, 
maybe what you just asked, I just proved that that's not true. So when you scroll, we're always paging, right? Because there can be, I mean, you can have 50,000 items in a channel, right? You can have massive amounts of data. So the bar on the right is not one-to-one -one because it is scaling. So we're, as you can see here, I'm, I'm jumping you to jump points instead of that being one-to-one. -one. Um, but we have made some improvements to, as you begin scrolling through some of this content, that the performance of uh, some of the rendering has been improved. Um, so from that standpoint, you should see we made some improvements to the way the some of the display uh, uh, was being done. So hopefully you'll see some improvements on that front. So you'll see here as I'm scrolling down through this with my mouse wheel that we're getting some better render performance. Uh, and, uh, we'll jump around a little bit. That's a detailed question. All right. I have to read this one. Is it part of the roadmap to get the dashboard of Avail to extract data from the project Revit models, things like warnings, families? Um, yeah, that's a good question. So the question is, is are we going to start pulling deeper data from the project files data? So obviously we've been concentrated on both the RFA and RVT project file type, but really from the standpoint of content management and how we're managing that. Now that we're there and have access to all that information, right, we, we can touch all kinds of other data. So I think what you're going to see is as that project browser that I just showed you, now the questions need to be, again, what are the real pain in the ass things that you're that would you like to be able to put your hands on and understand as part of that process? You know we're we're in this delicate and this is where we we need Charles guidance. Uh, a lot of we have some some of our customers that are on an advisory board that we do quarterly calls on. But you know we're we now need to know who do who do you all want us to be when we grow up? Are we a project information management tool? How much of that do you want us to drill into and dig into? There are other tools out there that obviously do those kinds of things. You know, where wh who, who do you all want us to be as we continue growing up, right? Because now you're asking questions about project management and project data and project workflows as opposed to content management and content information and content parts of the workflow. So as a company, right, this is these are tough waters to navigate because you've got to help us understand Right? Do you want us going over there, or you wave us off because you say, no, 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 we've already got that covered. There's another company's product we're using to do that. Or if you guys tell us that there's a real void in the market and what we're doing with this could easily bridge into those kinds of things, can, you know, have those conversations with us. Send me an email and let's have a private call about that so I can dig into right what those uh, what it is that you're wanting or needing or what you're seeing a void of in the market, and then. You know, th these are the kind of roadmap-y things, though, that we think about which direction, what's out there. Well, uh, the other thing, though, is that there may be other people doing things where we want to play well with them, and can we pull their information or data in and, and you know, do better things inside the avail interfaces with that information data or combine these kinds of things. So lots of opportunities on that front. That's it. Great. Well, we got in under the hour. Um, Hopefully you saw some things that you'd like to take advantage of. Those uh, there's there there was a little bit of confusion in one of our emails. Uh, 381 is the desktop version that's out there on the web. The the new avail rev the bra avail browser for Revit is 3.1.1, and I think in one of the emails we said 3.3.1, but it's really 3.1.1. So there's two products to go update on that front the desktop app and the avail browser for Revit. Go out there, the ones that are in the download section are those new updated versions. Get those into your release cycles inside your firms, take advantage of them. Hope you saw some features today that will help push that. Thanks for joining us. If you got any other follow-up questions, uh, make sure you feed those back through. Love to hear comments from you about if you think any of this is going to be useful. Give our team feedback. They always love to hear it. And then uh, don't forget about tomorrow and Monday's analytics webinars if you want to do a deeper dive on that. Talk to you guys soon. Thanks for joining us.